Hello and welcome back. I'm Devi Daly and we're going to do a yin yoga practice with two blocks. This is a great way to explore back bending in the yin practice, a wonderful way to open the heart, to open the chest, and to open the shoulders. It's really good for repetitive strain, tightness that you might get in your neck, your shoulders, or your upper back. So let's go ahead and get started using two blocks to come into supported fish pose. Take one block about well, one third from the edge of your mat and then the other one just a foot or so and behind it. And so middle height on this first block, high height on this second block. And then as you come back, what you want to do is find this right the back of your heart here. And that's where you want this first block to be supporting you. So inch it around if you need to. And then this one is where you want the base of your skull to land. Now your legs can be in a diamond shape with the soles of the feet together, or they could simply be straight ahead. Or you could bend your knees with your feet flat. Whatever's comfortable here. This pose is about opening up the chest, the upper body, and so whatever the legs do, it's just gonna support that. So as you settle into this pose, your arms could come down alongside your body or they could spread out at a wider angle if that feels good on your chest, maybe even straight out to the sides or even a bit further than that. And you can check in with your comfort level. If you feel like this is too intense, then the thing to do is come up and take this block that's under your heart, under your mid back and move it down a notch. And if you feel like you want more sensation, then the thing to do is stay where you are, except just lower down this block that's under your head to the middle height or even the lower height. So please feel free to adjust your blocks around. Some people like to turn them 90 degrees so that they're more up and down the spine. Uh, you can just feel it out in your own body and then taking some time to sink into whatever position you find that you are able to soften into. And as you soften in, you can discover your breath and where it wants to move when your body's in this position. How does the breath want to enter and explore your ribs? your side bodies, your back, your lower back.
And now for the last few breaths here, just let the arms come up so that they're hanging toward the ground. And you could interlace the fingers, you could turn the palms away, or whatever feels good, maybe just one hand holding the other wrist, or just separate arms. Feeling a little more back bend with this, maybe a little more sensation in your rib cage. Good, and now release your arms down to your sides. Draw your knees in toward each other and slowly push off your blocks. You could roll to the side first if you like. Make your way up to seated and onto hands and knees for child's pose. Have your blocks nearby for the next pose. And feel your breath moving in and out of your back now. And coming up to hands and knees, taking a couple of different ways to explore using blocks in puppy pose. The first is to use the block under the forehead as you settle down into this back bend with the arms out in front of you. And what's nice about this is that it gives you an opportunity to tilt the chin down as long as this feels safe on your neck. If it's too much, then maybe just take the block out or put it at the lower height. So we get more in the upper spine with this variation. And now releasing, just to come into our second variation where we're doing pretty much the opposite, which is take two blocks, have them under your arms so that your, there's space for your head in between. And then elbows come onto the blocks, palms together behind the head, and sink your chest down. Your forehead might touch the ground or it might not. Mine does not. Your chest might touch the ground, although I think most people's do not. And it doesn't matter because what we want to feel here is stretch in the shoulders. Maybe also the chest, particularly the upper arms, the triceps, so the back or the underside, the yin side of the upper arms. You can experiment with what the hands are doing, palms together, coming down the upper spine, or maybe just palms down on top of each other, or clasp the hands if you like. And settle into a steady breath.
include releasing your hands, slowly coming up and making your way into child's pose. Rest in child's pose for one minute. And coming up to hands and knees, take it into dragon pose with your right leg forward. And a couple of blocks, one under each hand is choice number one. And this can be nice because you can really bear your weight down into these blocks, middle height, low height, or high height. Or you can use the blocks for support under the thigh. So the high height of the block works well for a smaller person like me two blocks on top of each other, maybe if you're a larger person, or if you have an extra block, you can use it for your hands and then get some little more ability to play with how your weight is shifting left to right. So maybe you like the feeling of inching this front foot forward to make it a little closer to something like a split. You could lower this block down if, you're, uh, if you find an easy range of motion there, but most of us are gonna stay somewhere here. So with or without this block under the thigh, maybe you just are using both hands. We'll take some time to rest here in a supported dragon pose. And if you're still finding your stretch, finding your position, then see if you can Feel the stretch in the front of your left thigh and the front of your left hip. That's what we're going for. And when we stretch, when we lengthen this area, what we're doing is really a back bend. It's a form of a back bend. It's an asymmetrical, a one-sided back bend on the left side. Relaxing any tension that you notice, making space so you can soften. And now slowly releasing with the lunge shape staying in your body as you take one block under each hand and you can choose the height. I'm using the middle height, but you can go higher or lower as we shift the hips back and we're coming into this hamstring stretch. It's really a variation of half butterfly pose coming forward over the leg. And you might like your blocks closer with bent elbows. You might like your blocks farther out in front of you. You might prefer no blocks. So find your position resting into it for a couple of minutes. 
And notice the position of your head, maybe you like softening your head a little more. Maybe you like rounding your spine a little more. So remember, or if you're new to yin, we do like to allow the spine to round and this helps us to get into the fascia of the back. Relaxing into the sensation of that gentle pull on the fascia. Very good, let's release forward into a lunge, taking one block under each hand for at the low height for downward dog. The lovely way to experience downward dog with this extra little boost under the hands. It's uh, quite a bit easier for the arms and can sometimes, in some people's bodies, uh, really get a lot more easeful sense of length in the lower back and the legs. You can pump your legs, press one heel down and then the other here. Very good, let's take it to the second side. Left leg forward for the supported dragon. Your choice, blocks under the hands at the height that you like or block under the thigh, or two blocks under the thigh. And the placement of this block, by the way, is something you can play with middle thigh. I tend to like it pretty close to the sitting bone, but not directly under the sitting bone. But some people like it directly under the sitting bone, some people like it farther forward. Once again, sensing into the place that's lengthening, the place that's stretching, the front of the right hip, the front of the right thigh. And as you feel into this shape of the half back bend, the asymmetrical back bend, Notice how your heart expands. Notice how your breath moves in the heart space.
And now slowly releasing as we carefully transition into the hamstring stretch, blocks under the hands or not, as you shift your hips back. So the target area again is the hamstrings, this time on the left side. And whether your hips are farther back from the knee or farther forward, doesn't matter so much as long as you're getting that stretch in the target area. See exactly where your arms want to be. See how much softening and rounding you'd like to allow into your spine. How much would you like to hang your head? And there's also this subtle choice we have of the angle that we're coming forward at. So maybe it's directly toward the leg, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's slightly toward the right, slightly to the inside. Soften and breathe. And slowly bring it forward now and coming back into downward dog with the blocks under the hands, low height of the blocks, stepping back, walking it out. Feet can be a little wider if you'd like, maybe as wide as your mat this time. Pressing one heel down and then the other. And then settling down into child's pose. Knees can be a little wider this time if you'd like. And let your forearms rest on these blocks. It's a nice alternative way to feel child's pose. Or if it's too much on your shoulders, then put the blocks aside instead. and feel your breath.
And slowly now coming up, make your way onto your back and have your blocks handy where you can reach them. And taking one block or possibly two into supported bridge. So the middle height is where I'll suggest you start and take it under the sacrum. So the sacrum is your large bone at the back of your pelvis. You Want to make sure that block's not here in the lower back. It's lower than the waist. Arms can be down along the side of the body or wider out or even up over the head. Now some people like to do more here, a high height of the block or two blocks on top of each other. And alternatively, if you have a tender back, you might want to be at one block at the lowest height. Okay, and your choices with the legs are to keep them here with this bent knee foot flat position or extend your legs forward. Settling into whatever width your legs want to be, whatever arms you want to be at, so that you can feel a back bend in your lower back. And you might feel some sensations around your sacrum. And it's good in poses like this to remember what a back bend in the yin context is, which is Certainly some amount of stretching, but more amount of compressing. And it's an intentional therapeutic kind of compression that we feel in the back where the sacrum is articulating against the lower vertebra and where the sacrum is articulating against the pelvis and the, uh, the vast web of fascia of the lower back is kind of being moved in a way that it, it normally doesn't move. So this can feel a little uncomfortable, especially if it's new to you. If it feels pinching or painful, then please listen to your body and come out of it. But if it just feels a little unfamiliar and uncomfortable, see if you can soften into it. And if not, that's okay. Maybe you just lower down to the lowest height of the block or even just put a little something like a rolled or folded towel under your hips. Now from here, keep the block under your hips as you start to bend your knees. So you're elevating your legs and you may need to shift on your block, reposition it perhaps, so that you can comfortably lift your legs straight up over your head. And this is a supported snail where we'll start to let the legs come over the head. And that might just be a small angle like this. It might be more. 
so that you start to feel some stretch in the sacrum. And you might allow your block to tilt, which is what I'm beginning to do, so that the flat part of the block stays articulated against the flat part of the sacrum. Kind of depends on what sort of block you have. And if you're comfortable taking the full snail where your legs come over your head, please feel free to go for that. Wherever you do end up resting, softening, and relaxing into it. Noticing what you feel in your low back. And slowly releasing legs to the ground, feet to the ground first. Once the feet find the ground, lift your hips, slide your block out, and come to rest on your back, taking a nice long rest now to feel the effects of that last series of postures, forward bending, backward bending, Any comfortable resting position is fine here. So you can feel spacious. So the energy can flow. And so the breath can flow. And now bend your knees, windshield wipers with your feet flat, about mats width apart, maybe slightly narrower or wider if one feels better. And arms spread out to the sides, both knees to the right, and the head turns to the left. Inhale, knees up to center, head turns the opposite way of the knees. And we'll keep on moving side to side. You can start to find your own rhythm with this. And an alternative arm position that I love is arms overhead, which gets a little more into the lats and into the side bodies. Good, next time your knees come back to the center, stay here, bring the arms back down, and take your right ankle over your left knee. So we are coming into figure four pose, and option to use a block under your head, so that it's way easier to reach this leg. We're gonna clasp the hands either behind the left thigh or in front of the left shin. If you don't find this block under the head to be helpful, then take it out or use something smaller like a folded blanket or towel. And here targeting the right glutes, outer hips. Breathing into this space. And 
the softening. Releasing the legs, left foot on the floor, right foot on the floor, second side, left ankle over the right knee, and draw the legs in, clasping behind your thigh or in front of your shin, and now targeting a stretch in the left buttock, the left glutes. And release your legs. Take the block out from under your head and rest on your back. Feel the effects of figure four pulse. Notice any sensations of heat, especially in the area that's been stretched. Maybe a feeling of fullness or flow or tingling. Now bend your knees and hug them into your chest and gently rock side to side. Rolling over onto one side, coming up to set up for saddle or saddle variations. So blocks are 
probably going to be your friend here. And the same setup that we started with for that supported fish is a nice way to try. You may already know that saddle pose is not for you. So let's start with the saddle pose and then I'll, um, no, actually I will start with the variations and then we'll go into saddle. So the variation is to sit directly on the heels and just work on this nice stretch that is in the front of the shin, the front of the ankles, and maybe you feel some sensations in the bones of the feet. If it's too much to be here, sitting directly on the heels, then the blocks are your friends. One block, maybe at the middle height. The tall height of the block doesn't work so well um, for sitting directly on, but two blocks on top of each other at the low height can be quite wonderful. So this can be your version of saddle pose for today, one or two blocks or directly on the heels. You can take it farther, but again, you don't have to, to be doing saddle. You could be upright in the spine. You could go onto your hands or one block under each hand as a mellower variation, whatever angle the blocks need to be so you feel supported forward and back or side to side. Or maybe you're going to be coming farther back and arranging the block so it comes under the back of the heart again and then the other block to support your head at a comfortable height. You might come to the floor easily, in which case no blocks are needed. And you'll notice I'm sitting directly on my heels, which is just one version of saddle. There is also the Supta Virasana style where you sit between your feet. And that is also a valid yin variation. So settling into your version of saddle, whether you're upright, leaning back on your hands, or lying back. Let the eyes close and let your mind settle. Let your breath become calm. And let your body soften.
And for the last two or three breaths, it might feel good to reach the arms up again, let them hang. And now slowly bring the arms back down and carefully come out of the pose. You could press onto your elbows or hands to come up and make your way onto your back for a nice one minute rebound. Any comfortable position on your back. And now bending your knees, hug them in for a moment and now take one hand onto each knee, circle the knees around in one direction, circling about three times, nice and slow. And then three times in the other direction, feeling your sacrum, feeling your lower back. Good, and now coming into cattail pose, we're gonna take these blocks and possibly use them. You might not need them, but both knees come in and over to the right. And now we straighten the bottom right leg. So just the left knee is crossing over. And now take this knee to the ground and inch your right hip back so that you're Feel like you're trying to get the front of your right hip on the ground and your chest is going to face more toward the floor than the sky but your right arm is still sticking out here and this is what helps to get this hold of the foot use a strap if it's too hard to hold it with the foot and then beginning to open it out here and this is where you might say hey i'm not totally comfortable i need some support or you might unfold into this and just love it without support. If you feel like you need the support, you take one block under a foot or under a knee or a shin and the other block under the head. Or maybe you don't need both of those. Maybe it's just one of them, but those are two really helpful things for this position. And as you come into it, the leg that you're holding in your hand, which is your right leg, see if you can get a sense of moving that knee farther back in space, moving that leg back in space, and that's where the back bend of this pose comes from. This pose is both a back bend and a twist at the same time. It's a lot going on at the same time. So soften into it, breathe into it. Let yourself settle.
then slowly releasing, come back to the center. Pause at the center with your feet flat, with your knees resting against each other and your feet almost as wide as your mat, your hands resting on your belly. And feel the breath in your belly. Good, let's take it to the second side now. So scoot the hips over to the right. Now bend both knees over to the left. And now the bottom leg straightens. And roll toward your chest. Roll the front of the left hip toward the earth. And bend up the back leg. Grab a hold and unfold, open back. Use the blocks if you need them. Finding your version of cattail and remembering that the bottom leg, the left leg, can perhaps move back in space. There can be a little bit of an energetic feeling there as you, uh, as you sort of kick down into the left knee, kicking it down and back. And slowly releasing, knees up to the center. And extend your legs long, coming into Shavasana, your final relaxation position. You could use your blocks and rest in a supported fish if you'd like, or you could support your legs in a Supta Baddha Konasana position, like so, with the blocks on the outside of the shins or simply rest on your back. And this is our time to really integrate and process and feel what has been happening in the body. So this is not a mental process. This is kind of a time to put the mental, the mind aside and let the body take over and integrate this healing space. After yin yoga, we tend to really kick into our parasympathetic nervous system or the relaxation response. And it's so wonderful to gift ourselves this time 
to really be in this space of relaxation, calm, this place of easeful stillness. Imagining with your mind's eye how much space is inside, how much space has been opened up during this practice. And imagining with your mind's eye all of the spaces your breath can explore now. And imagining with your mind's heart that the breath is massaging you from the inside, every breath. And now I'm gently taking a deeper breath into your belly and into your heart. And as you exhale, gently wiggle your fingers and toes and stretch out into your arms and your legs. And that's our practice today. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you next time. <laughs>